motherfucker low key, you know when you see somebody like he's matured a lot. <laughs> Cause like Evan about six years ago, seven years ago, I'd be like, damn, we going out tonight? Where? This motherfucker put his finger. I'll never forget. This one I knew he had money. He put his finger in a hole and the door open. I'm like, what kind of Batman shit is this? You know what I mean? <laughs> but um, yeah, this motherfucker. Yeah, we were both wild at the same time, but good wild. We yeah, but you. What's interesting is you always. To me, what's interesting is you always had this clear goal. I didn't believe it. Have to, well, I believed it. I was like, I didn't know it was gonna happen. Yeah. But you had a very clear understanding of what you wanted to do. And you did it in a different way. Your idea of what you wanted to do was very responsible compared to what was happening at the time. Well, that's because I'm outside and niggas will get me. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like the people that are doing what I do that don't have a face to it don't really own it. So they're really pussy. Um, but I feel like when you put your face to it, you're accountable for everything that goes out. So you have to have some level of integrity or you just have to have a level of fearness, fearlessness where you're ready to die. I don't want to die. Uh, you know, but I want to just, you know, my idea of Hollywood or not was, let me pull back the veil and let you see your favorite celebrity. If I'm going to be on a jet with Floyd and when we land, you're saying that he's doing X, Y, Z, but he's not. That's not fair. But at the same time, as a fan, I want to know what the fuck Floyd is doing. So let me build Hollywood Unlock. I'm going to unlock Hollywood. But when I did it, celebrities I thought I was cool with weren't fucking with me. They were like, I right, ain't nah, that messy shit. You know, and then started low key like just shitting on my name. Then I got to a point where I was like, well, fuck y'all then. Your music suck, your outfit suck, your wife is ugly, your kid is ugly, your house is broke, everything about you, your attire is <laughs> whack, you sucking dick on the low and rapping about bitches. Bitch, you, you know. Then I just started doing that, and then everybody was like, oh shit, this nigga's really saying what the fuck we thinking. And half the shit I get is from celebrities. So I'm like, yo, you know, this was funny. But now I'm like maturing, I'm 44. Can't keep spilling tea forever. Let's have cappuccino. Where the Obamas at? <laughs> no, it's so funny because I would call him during that time and I'd be like, bro, don't do that. Don't say that. And he was like, I'm not saying anything that didn't happen. <laughs> I was like, still. I, I get the I get a, I get the sense that you use the word maturity, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and integrity and accountability. So at this point in time from like not to say that you're not, but you want to be taken seriously as like the real like journalism, like integral journalistic perspective. Is that right? Is that See, here's the deal. I've always had integrity, right? Mm -hmm. All my jobs, I worked in, believe it or not, I worked in education. Okay. I worked at probation. I wasn't the police, but I worked in probation. Mm. I worked, uh, somebody, somebody, somebody must be on probation. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I worked as a labor union director in healthcare. I worked in nonprofits. And then I decided I want to follow my passion. I loved, you know, celebrities in my era were icons. Every celebrity yeah. out, Madonna, Prince, Michael Jackson, these were icons that I was like, yo, they just bigger than life figures that I just want to be great. And this was a kid who was in a foster home who's, parents had abandoned them, had been molested, had been just basically discarded uh, like trash and said like, yo, I want to be great like that. So I watched these people and then I got out and I met Queen Latifah at 15 and then, you know, she was on, she was just like a cool chick who was like lit at the time. And I thought like, yo, like I want to, I want to know her. I want to be cool with her. And then as we started developing our relationship, I started meeting people um, and even meeting this guy, like I don't look at him at, as a celebrity, even though we know who he is, he literally is like family to me. But and has brought me into his world where, you know, it's very different than mine. Mm -hmm. You know, how so? Not anymore. But, but, but how so? <laughs> I think the difference is, is you know, we all know that he was raised with money and privilege. Although he doesn't act like it, like he doesn't treat me like he's better than me, mm -hmm. and I don't treat him like I'm better than him because I went through an extreme amount of struggle. I think we just respect each other as human beings. I usually gravitate towards those type of people mm -hmm. that are in the industry. The people that don't like me are people who are doing fuck shit and don't want nobody to know that they're doing fuck shit. But we all make mistakes. I make mistakes. Everybody see my shit. I, I live and own it. I just feel like we live in a, just an overly sensitive society now where people are just overly consumed with being a packaged brand and don't let anybody know we're human. And that's the reason why when they find out there's a crack in that, that veil of bullshit, Mm -hmm. They point to me and say I'm the bad guy. So mm. with, with you, you talked about like the trauma of growing up and, and those things. Like how you personally, how did you deal with all that? Because it sounds like it's, it was a lot and it was heavy. But you've 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 of elevated. course like you've elevated and you've continued to push ahead. And I think even with you 
the stories that you tell about celebrities is so, such a raw, real thing. And I think that's important because nowadays more than ever, everybody is so in love with the celebrity and they see the finished product, but they don't see, like you said, everything that's behind the curtain, the, the trauma they might have been growing up. Like, how did you personally, like, navigate through all that and, and still maintain to, to reach your goals and keep pushing? Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, uh, I've had access to a lot of amazing people. I always credit Floyd Mayweather. I mean, he was somebody who told me when, when I first met him, he said, you know, let's tell the cameras, he had the cameras rolling, let's tell the cameras you're number one. You're the number one blogger. And I had just started Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nigga, I'm not number one. And he said, well, why? I said, well, Karen Sybil's doing this, which we all know she's a fucking criminal. Uh, we, you know, this person's doing that, this person's doing this. And he, he said, number one is a mentality, it's not a fact. If in your mind you believe you're number one, who the fuck gonna challenge that? People tell me Muhammad Ali's number one, Tyson's number one. I feel like I'm number one, so who's gonna challenge that? And, it, it, and I had already had a certain level of confidence where I can walk in a room and know who I was, but now I was like, yo, I need to really start seeing myself for being great. And this is where I used to not really understand the complexity with Kanye West, because many times he would say, I'm a king, I'm a god, I'm this, I'm that. And we should, as black men, believe that we are great, we are kings, we are gods, we are this and that. I mean, once you start saying slavery ain't real, nigga, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but, but for the most part, what he was talking about was the level of confidence that we had to have. So I just had to really get it fairly quickly. And then when I got into the journey of getting to where I am, there were so many no's along the way. No, 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 no. You, there's no space for you. Why don't you try that? Why don't you try mm. this? You know, um, and now that we just like ended this year, our most profitable year, going into another amazing year with amazing partnerships, I just laugh at all those losers because they all still trying to figure their shit out and I'm continuing to excel. And trauma. I think, I think, it's interesting. I think what's interesting to me is like, our friendship has nothing to do with your career. At all. All mine. Or yours. Um, which is unique, because we have this just friendship that has come over time. And, it, and, it's, and it's trust. There's a, there's a trust there, you know what there's I mean? There's gotta be. So for me, it's like, you know, normally, and during the time that you were starting, the fear that I had towards most people in that, like, space was oh shit, if I do something, they're gonna say something, or if this, that, and the other, or whatever it is that celebrities have because they're always worried that something's gonna ruin their career. Um, there was a very interesting thing about you that always stayed the same, is that you were telling the truth, and you were willing to say you were wrong if you were not right. Yeah. Yeah. And you also wanted to also show the fact that when everybody's saying one thing about somebody does not mean it's the truth. Mm -hmm. And you still do it. I'll give you a great example. So Rihanna texts me and said, what do you think about this Dave Chappelle special? I said, everybody keeps fucking asking me what I think. <laughs> I fucking know. So do. I told her, you know, it's Rihanna. You do what the fuck she tell you to do. I said, I'm going to go turn it on right now. I turned it on and I watched it and I laughed the whole way through. Now I'm gay as fuck. I ain't gay as fuck, like I don't wear rainbows and shit and I ain't running, I ain't running up and down the street in fucking booty shorts, but I'm fucking gay, right? Uh, and so I'm like, let me watch it. Like why is all my, these gay niggas mad, you know? And there's no gay counsel. Like you can't call a gay hotline and ask why the fuck people are mad. So I like watch it and shit, and then I get to the part where he starts telling the story about his trans friend that he built through comedy. And I'm like, yo, this is fucking deep shit. Like, y'all are missing the point. He's telling you as a straight man, first of all, he's flipping our shit upside down. He's saying, like, niggas ain't getting the same respect as the gay community. We've been niggas for a long time. We've been robbed of our families, robbed of our communities, robbed of our culture. Sh sh told we were second class citizens. We went through slavery, Jim Crow, and mass incarceration. Like, we are an affected group of people mm -hmm. and a marginalized group that will continue to be shit on. But the gay community, like, y'all motherfuckers can blossom like flowers, no pun intended. And he's making a joke out of it, but having real conversations at the same time. I didn't understand why gay people didn't get it. <laughs> so I called up some of my trans friends, like, yo, like, yo, what, what the fuck is going on? Like, are you mad? I'm mad, I'm mad, but I ain't watching it. How the fuck you gonna get mad if you ain't watching it? This shit's funny. <laughs> but see, I got exhausted with trying to make logic out of, out of situations that aren't illogical. Mm. Like this is, he is a comedian. You never heard of Richard Pryor, you never heard of Eddie Murphy, you never heard of- Dick he, Gregory, everybody. These people, you, I watched Eddie Murphy deliriously last week and that nigga said fag. <laughs> I was like, oh, he wouldn't have been able to oh, exist right been. now. <laughs> yeah. 
So, yeah. like, we're just overly sensitized right now as a community, and we're ready to cancel everybody. So, when Rihanna said, I said, why everybody keep asking me? She said, because you're like the, the gay Chappelle. I said, if I become a comedian, <laughs> that's Chappelle. my name. Gay Chappelle. Gay Chappelle. <laughs> so, I'm like, dude, I told Tiffany Hatch the other day, I might step out and do a set as gay Chappelle. <laughs> oh. Fuck it. All my shit gonna be gay. You'll be great. Yeah. I, I'm not gonna do that shit. Can we talk about where you, where you sit right now is an amazing place, right? Mm-hmm. Like you said, you're about the, one of your most profitable year. Um, Chef J is arriving. Maybe he can go. He gonna but, be but, 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 but wait, but, but, but wait. Before like, you preface it, though. Wait, y'all about to bring me bugs and shit because I ain't eating weird shit. No, 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 okay. no. Not at all. You know, wait, that's what I mean. But wait, listen. Okay, okay. I want it because I don't want to forget. You, you alluded to being discarded. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about a little bit of that. Yeah. Like, what was your, what was the upbringing like? Like, where where are you from? Where are yeah. you from? Not just a state, but where are you from? Like, okay. where are you from? So, like, this is where I really feel like the world comes full circle. Because he talked earlier about, like, how we have a connection based on just us as human beings and not on what we do. Okay. So, I was in foster care from 8 to 14, 8 to 15. Okay. And in that time, one of the first school shootings that ever happened happened in Stockton, California, where I'm from. Northern California, one of the most uh, dangerous cities in the country, one of the top 10 dangerous cities in the state. And we had the first school shooting I had ever heard of when I was 10 years old. And this guy had killed all these Asian kids at this Asian, predominantly Asian school. A couple of weeks later, we hear Michael Jackson's coming to town to like meet with the school and pay for the funerals and pay for the medical bills and all this crazy shit. I was in love with Michael Jackson at the time. Of course, we all were. Fast forward, I didn't even know his, I mean, I knew his mother's connection to Michael Jackson, maybe assumed, you know, he had the relationship, didn't know that was his godfather and all those things, but in hearing stories from him about Michael, my affection, I grew from Michael because what I learned from him in that situation was compassion, how to care for people that you don't know about. Mm. You know, typically we think of love and compassion for our parents and our cousins and our grandmas, but like to, to really love other people that you have no connection to, no financial gain from, you know, that was really what the emulation for me of what uh, compassion looked like. Then to meet Evan, and then Evan introduced me to his mom, you know, who the world re- reveres. But what I loved about him was, for him, it's just mom. I didn't have that relationship with my mom. So mm-hmm. what I actually love about Evan that I've never really said to him is I love watching him and his affection for his mother, the new song that she has that I keep playing over and over and Let's over. Go. You know, uh, that's about her love for her children. I didn't get that from my mother. And so I think that in many ways, you know, I respect that Rihanna, people think I just love her because she's beautiful and all that, and she probably is the only woman I would have sex with. <laughs> and I've told her this, so it ain't no secret. Wait. ASAP, don't get it fucked up. <laughs> so, is that Rihanna sees me as a human being. I love that they don't see, he don't see Hollywood unlocked, she don't see Hollywood unlocked. They see just me as a human being, and, and oftentimes, I'm sure he's had more issues with that as a celebrity or a public figure being seen as just Evan. Yeah. I don't like the idea that you don't see me as just Jason because ultimately I got the same issues everybody got and uh, the same fears and same you know desires, but I gravitate to people who see me as a person. So, and so you know, you've been doing Hollywood, you've had Hollywood Unlocked for years now. Was there a point you talk about like compassion and people probably didn't see you through the lens of compassion. Mm-hmm. Was there a point where you're like, you know what, I don't want to do this shit no more because it, it might have ate at you because you know who you are and I've only met you for a second and I could tell like the, the you're amazing a good human person. being listen, you listen, are. Listen, 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 before, you walk, before you walked in, I was like, <laughs> but see, but that I, motherfucker's but I, but a trip. But, but I also, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, but I also he, didn't preface it because I know him so well. That's, but that's and I so know dope. that when you know him, you have five minutes with him. You know who he is. I'm blown away already. And I'm blown away. But, but like it's interesting Yo, because look, for real. because there's a there's there's certain human beings that can't lie. Mm-hmm. Even if they wanted to lie, they can't lie. He can't lie mm-hmm. because he is who he is. So his his journey that he's doing has nothing to do with hurting people at all. He's expe- expressing a truth, but it also comes from a place of admiring certain people and what they've done, but also explaining that we all are the same in, in, in a lot mm-hmm. of ways. It's, I mean, like, I'm on my own journey. Like, as much as I'm in it and people think I perfected it, I'm on my own journey. I'll give you an example, right? So I'm at the VMAs. 
and I'm walking through the back and I see Megan Thee Stallion. She's on her rise. I'm like, yo, Megan Thee Stallion, like, oh fuck. And when I see her, she turns to me and she's like, like she looks like she saw a ghost, right? So I, 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 walk, I walk right up to her, I'm like, Meg, what's up? And she's like, well, I don't know if you like me. I'm like, of course I like you. And she thought I didn't like her because she had done a song with Nicki, who I don't like. And then I'm friends with Cardi, who Nicki don't like. But that's not my beef, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm like, yo, she's like, I don't know where you... Long story short, I put her on the phone with Cardi. They have a moment. They exchange information. Later on, WAP comes out. The whole world's reveling in WAP. I'm like, I'm not the nigga to go on social media and say WAP would not be here without me. Right. WAP would not be here without me because bitches thought bitches was mad, but I put bitches on the phone. Right. And this is what I do. I'm a bridge builder. As much as y'all think I'm a whatever... So when as we, much as they think you're a bridge decimated. Oh yeah, they think I I to burn a bridge down. Now here's the deal. <laughs> you can. I can. I have. <laughs> but here's the deal, right? So so now Watt blows up and Megan's career is out there and she's on the cover of Marie Claire and then she don't come on Hollywood Unlocked. And I feel some type of way about it. And I sure. criticize the album sales and I criticize her moves just like I do every other celebrity who doesn't value black media as much as they value white media. If you get affection from Entertainment Tonight, but you don't talk to Hollywood Unlocked, you ain't nothing but a nigga in the house that's looking for the master's affection in order to be validated mm -hmm. as a nigga who's a better nigga than me. Yeah, you holding people and, accountable. And because Ooh. I tell it to wait, their wait, face. I, no, wait, no, but see, I, tell I it need to, you to run that line okay, again. Okay, think about it. Run the line that you just think said. Think about it. Well, that's we, a ball. Back in slave days, right, niggas was fighting to be that one nigga in the house that felt they had privilege over all the niggas in the field, but you were still just a nigga. So when I look at these celebrities who forget black media, like, and you look down on us, you hit a carpet and you run straight to E and Extra because that, that validation from white people just sucked you in to make you feel like you was better than us. You're a nigga in better clothes. You're just a nigga, though. So when Megan did it and I criticized her, she felt some type of way and everybody said I was a hater. Then Charlemagne criticized her and he was a god, but whatever. Yeah. Now, I did the same to Kevin Hart, but what did Kevin do? He got on the phone with me. He asked me what my point of view was. We yeah. built a relationship. Yeah. He came on my show. That is what I'm going to do. I'm going to always keep it real to get them to respect me. Whether you like me or not, I don't care. Accountability. We talk about it all the time. It's like as black people, and this is an inherent thing. It's like as soon as we start to taste a little of success, we still turn around to everybody else like, is this good? Is this good enough right, for you guys? Right. And we forget... Like you said, the black outlets, the other people, we forget to pull people up because we don't think there's enough. We, we don't think there's enough money. We don't think we don't we're think, enough. Yeah. I was just about to no, say, but I, but we I, don't I, think I, we're I, enough. I'll yes, yes. decide if this stays on this, right? What? I'll decide if what I'm saying stays on this. But there is a side of this that's different because... <laughs> it's just a chef. Oh, I'm like, okay. you know, I got it. No, it's <laughs> no, no, just a chef. It's a side no. of it that's different. I'll show you because, it's because, because, <laughs> because, because there's a lot of times there are a lot of things that are done for us in the black community that are taken and not done properly in mm -hmm. a really bad yeah. way and treated wrongly. And mm -hmm. a lot of the hate usually comes from us, which yeah. is sad. But in a lot, absolutely. I'm, just, I'm listening a lot, right when now. I'm when, listening, when I tell I'm you, like... Right just like BET, it's amazing. It's amazing, right? We all should support it. It's not owned by black people. Mm -hmm. It's not those things. Not anymore. They pay people a lot less. They don't shoot it properly. And you look bad. So as an actor, you, you end up, your career doesn't look as good as it should be because you decide to do something for that culture, mm -hmm. your culture. But that also hurts your career. Mm -hmm. So we have to elevate on all sides of it. It can't just be I'm supporting to support it. It has to elevate on all yeah. sides. But you know, that's so what I love about the conversation with Kevin because he said, I never really thought about not su me not supporting black journalists until you called me out on it. And now I'm very mindful I'm, when I'm on a carpet. When I go to a movie premiere with Tiffany Haddish and she goes straight to the black people first oh, and then comes back incredible. and works the carpet. You know? But she's on another level. She's on a different level. When I tell you... You introduced me but to But wait, let me say this. Beyonce could change my career as a black journalist or black whatever. Rihanna, an interview, can change my career. So why would we not plant the seed with those that love and talk about us every day? I talk about Rihanna every day. Okay. So if you go and talk to the people that talk about you once a month or once a week or once a, every other week, why are you not talking to the people that talk about you every day? Well, I think that's also changing. It is changing. I think what happened was, is what's happened for years, 
is the fact that everybody's placed you where you're supposed to. When you get on the carpet, they move you to where you're supposed to go. And, and then they tell you when but you're listen, done. But listen, yeah, to what you did, listen to what you just said. They move you to where I agree. you're supposed to go. Yes. What What does that mean? You, for, for no, 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 no. Yes, but listen. Yes, of course, they take care of their publications. But when you're, when you're starting out, or mm -hmm. even if you've been in this industry, you mm -hmm. watch what it is. And you listen to the people that you've paid to take care of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So when you walk on the carpet, and I go, I don't want to do anything. Like, you got to do this, though. So mm -hmm. you do this, you do E, you do this, and these are the, the ones you do, and you go on to the thing. Because the more you do, if you do something that are wrong, they're going to talk shit about you, you might say the wrong thing. You really want to do as less as possible, right? But they never put you in the space where you're doing the ones that are on the come up. You're but, never doing but, the public. But this is why and that's wrong. But, this is, but you sit there being like, whatever. And they can tell me what I got to do and I'm out. But this is what, but, but here's two things, right? And this is one okay. thing. This is why Halle Berry is, in my opinion, she's like everything. Not just because she's beautiful she's, and successful. She's going to black outlets on that carpet, intentionally giving them the space. And the second thing is, you know, I've hired. But I think that's changing. That's why it's changing. It, it is. But I've had I've hired black publicists who are trash, okay. lazy, mm -hmm. don't want to work hard, expect everything. They want that check to come on time, but they don't work hard. But I've also had white publicists say, "We need you to really go to GQ and E. Shade Room is going to write about you anyway." No, I want to talk to everybody. I want to talk to everybody who wants to talk to everybody. And. You know, I see Kevin Frazier. We text on the phone. I saw him on the red carpet recently. And when I was on the red carpet, you know, he was trying to get other entertainment people. Entertainment Tonight, right? Entertainment Tonight. Okay. He was trying to get other cool. people before me. And, and I ended up not doing Entertainment Tonight that night. And I wanted to think, and I, and I ended up presenting at the Ebony Power 100 party. And I ended, ended up thinking, like, when you see me on the carpet, you should be pulling me in. Because there will become mm -hmm. a time where I am extremely successful. And I'm still going to let you pull me in. But the way I'm going to shit on you is going to be so disrespectful. <laughs> Because I'm not going to get pulled into an interview and give you the, hi, everybody, how you doing? You know, back on the ranch. Now I'm going to be like, hey, nigga, good to see you. Didn't want to talk to me three years ago. What's up? <laughs> so, uh, so, 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 no, 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 no. Wait, this no, 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 no. Wait, this no, no, no. You're going to forget what you're thinking about. Okay. But I have to say it. What? <laughs> I'm going to forget. Because what? do you understand the fear? Do you get it? What? There's a lot of fear. In being honest? No. Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Of course. So what I'm saying is there's... And it sucks, because it's true. Yes. But like people do get canceled. Yeah, unless right? you own your shit like but, me. No, even if you own it. No, you can't cancel. Mm. You can't cancel you. Mm -mm. But what I'm saying is, we've been taught in this yes, industry, yes, you yes. make mistakes. You and when you make mistakes, it doesn't work yeah, out. For sure. So you do the easiest way. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's the right way, but it's like- The safest you, way. Yeah, you go and hit these channels that, they don't even talk about shit. Mm -hmm. It's like, how's your kids? Mm -hmm. How's your wife? But how tax? I disagree. How, 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 how I disagree. Doing? Because listen, listen. Let, let's we can use. I want to use two specific. I wasn't finished, but I'm gonna let you. But but but, <laughs> like yay, yay is a prime example. Whether you say yay when he, hey, the president doesn't care about black people. It should have been over. It would have been over. We're talking. We're not talking recently. We're talking what, ten, twelve years ago. That's a wrap. That's a rap, like, I'm gonna find a way to cancel you, whatever, right? Then you talk to Ye now, still some of the things that he's done, but I think that in people's authenticity is the valor of the authenticity, like yourself. You have to be is very, what actually, very powerful. And no, no, I think the, the authenticity is your power. Because if, you, if you're okay with understanding- to a degree. Yeah, no, no, when you're okay with understanding that I'm okay regardless. No. But that's the no. problem. Most people... I disagree because this is the thing. If you have enough power that enough people listen to what you say, what you say, no matter when you're wrong or right, matters. And if you put out something that, in emotion, drunk, living okay. a hard time, whatever, okay. and you're like, this is what I feel. In that moment, the amount of people that love you may follow that opinion. I'll give you an example. Um, Jay-Z meeting with the NFL. Mm, I remember. I mean, niggas yeah. wasn't sitting around celebrating that, but didn't nobody say nothing. Because nope. Jay-Z is a certain level of power, a certain level of prestige, a certain level of respect. And even though it was a, 
a, a power grab for a bag for Rock Nation and elevating his artists and giving him a platform and, and, and feeding his bottom line. Nobody criticized it because he's Jay-Z. You know, nobody's really pressed why Solange was kicking him in the elevator because people ain't going to talk about that. We still don't know if Sanaa Lathan's the one that bit Beyonce, but we, we're going to stop talking about it because there's just certain people you don't touch. Whereas Hollywood Unlocked, we're going to talk about all that. Because there's no cancellation of anything I already don't have. Everything I got, I built on my own. I own so this, own, this is the one thing I want to talk about because we're very close. And on his way up, now he's here, obviously, present in a very powerful space. Even before that, there were times where I was like, bro. <laughs> I called him, I said, bro. Because the way I grew up is like, we're very careful. Mm. We're very careful. Let's I tell you why talk, we're careful. Talk about that. I tell you why we're careful because we know what we say matters. Yeah. It matters for a lot of reasons. And we also care about what has been done before. And we have to be very cautious of that. How right? Wait. So okay. I would sometimes reach out hey, and say, hey, I'll reach out. Hey. hey. You really need did you? I'm like, yeah. I love you, brother, but like we you know what I mean? Like, it's not necessary, you know. And what I respected was he would always be like, thank you, Evan, I hear you. I'm not saying that anything that's not truthful. I'll make sure I, you would be, you, it was almost like you'd be like, I'd do a little more research on it, but I'm telling you, it's what's true. I'm not talking shit. And if it turns out to be different, I will make sure that people know that I was wrong. And in my mind, however you responded to me, I didn't know how to tell you, just please don't do it. You just <laughs> Yeah, because you, you, because you just have this. I respected like, you, but I was like, he shit, He has this man. affection to be nice for everybody. And being honest isn't not being nice. Like, you know, it's almost like when you go to... Turn, I've changed your mind about a few things. A couple things, yeah. I mean, look, I've made mistakes. I've had to apologize to Ariana Grande. You know, mm -hmm. Ariana. I, I shouldn't have that. said that. You know, but there were people on my phone like, don't apologize. And then there were people saying, man, you better fix that. You know, but it was, it was Cardi who was like, yo, like, that's somebody's sister. You're a man. She's a young girl. Like, like, come on now. You could do better than that. You're better than that. So I apologize. And then once I apologize, it was like, now apologize to Nikki. I'm like, nah, fuck that. I ain't apologizing to Nikki. <laughs> How but, taxing yeah. is it on you, though? You know what I mean? Like, you talk about those things. Like, you always have to be conscious of, like, how you're moving and the things you're involved with and the people and what you're doing growing up like did that take like you know a toll on you at all it's not too bad not too bad i got very lucky i grew up a very amazing life you know what i mean yeah. and i think at the time all those things was so important it also teaches you to look at things in a different kind of way mm. I'm sure it probably was a lot harder for my mother, you know? Mm. And I think that um, when, you, when you carry, I mean, my mom might be one of the most famous women of all time. Maybe, right? Mm. Arguably. Yeah. Mm. And I think that... Um, I'm agreeing with you, but we'll just say arguably. Yeah, it's, I mean, I mean in, in the sense of what it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think that that must, that must be a lot. And I think... Us growing up with her and all the love that she's given and to the entire world, not just like the entire world, that comes with responsibility. And that responsibility has to do with making sure that what we say and what we do is right towards what she wanted to give to the world because she is very on point with these things. Mm -hmm. And I think that like, because she's done that in such a way and she cares so much. If she didn't care, she probably could say anything, but she cares so much about what, not, not even us, the young people, the new culture, everybody hears. Mm. And her biggest thing is not about anything with like, don't say this, don't say that, don't do that. One of the biggest things that I've noticed, even when I'm talking about my children, when I tell her, I'm like, Jack is being wild right now. Just being wild. I'm saying, Jagger, my daughter's being wild. Mm -hmm. She goes, I hope you don't say that around her. Mm. And I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, we take on words. Wow. What you say, because you're her father, if you say she's wild, she might think she's wild, because she believes you. 
everything you say matters. And we, we live in a world where freedom of t speaking oh. is most important. I believe in that 100%. But what we give our children, if I say, I remember we were on, you know, we'll decide if this is on here or not, but we were on a family text and someone's like, oh my God, she's going to be trouble. You're going to have a big hard time. And she's like, don't put that on her. Mm -hmm. Why are you going to put on her that she's trouble? Mm -hmm. yeah. She goes, because what you, put, what you say matters. So if she thinks in her head, my dad thinks I'm going to be trouble, you're giving her that as a personality. Yeah, you just really helped me. And, and what's interesting <laughs> is like, I kept being like, she's joking, mom. It's not you know a big deal. About? Don't make yep. her feel bad now. Absolutely. She's tripping out because mom, anything mom says, everybody's amazing. worried. But everybody's worried all of a sudden because hmm. they said she's going to be a problem. We project. And my mom said, yo, I made sure. What I said to you is what I wanted you to be. I didn't say things about you that I didn't want you to be. Mm. So when we explain to children who are growing, loving who we are, and she goes, people have loved, first of all, people have loved her on all ages. So if she says something, people could take on that reality. They don't have to, but it's a real thing. So she is so specific about what she gives to the world because she's like, it resonates, you know? She doesn't understand why I watch films that are about dangerous things or people shooting each other or anything going on. She's like, you're, you attract the energy that, you, that you're in. It's okay to talk about it. It's okay to know it's there. It's very powerful. And I, I still don't truly mm. live by that. I, I still do what I do, but I get it. Yeah. I get it. When they said, yo, that kid is, that kid is hella, Anxious and wild, and he's 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 got he's you know that becomes you. I was the I was yeah. the energetic kid that like ran outside and did crazy. Shit. I was crazy as a kid. That was because somebody told you you were crazy as a mm -hmm. kid. You might have just been interesting. Yeah, and it's a label you carry with you. Well, and there's people that are gonna watch this and be like, why are they talking to him? He's this. He's that. He's messy. He's a faggot. He's there's there's so much out there. About me. You know, the thing about it is, I don't subscribe to the praise. I don't subscribe to the criticism. I don't subscribe to none of that shit. I got a full agenda, a full calendar, a full a meeting. I got meetings and employees. I got shit I got to do. Partnerships to deliver to. Content and I have to create. And you showed up for me. Well, of course. But the thing about it is, I think oftentimes we get um, distracted by what the audience is saying. Like, I'm gonna keep putting it out. You're gonna keep consuming it. And it's going to keep growing and growing and growing. And, and I look back at, I was just on a call before I got here, because we're in the process of raising money and talking to this fund. And I was, uh, he was talking to me about, you know, tell me the journey of Hollywood. Like, when I told my story, when I got the call, I called my advisor. I'm like, yo, I was never able to tell my own story that way. Why can I tell it now? Because I've lived it. I've lived with it. I've mastered it. And I know what I'm doing. What people say about me, how they judge me, what they feel like or don't like, those are feelings that they're investing in, I don't care. Mm -hmm. you know? And I think as we get to a place where we're less sensitive about what people think, and I know this is difficult for brands that are packaged and you gotta be this because this is what you're selling to the consumer. Um, I'm just giving you me whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be there, you can't avoid it, and it's gonna keep getting And that's a beautiful way of living. And that's what, a level of freedom. It's a freedom. But that's, what freedom. Te that's what you're teaching. That's yeah, freedom, facts. real freedom. But as, as, as adults, I think with a lot of time, with the younger generation, we put that on us. Mm -hmm. Watching even Bronx now at school, the generation of genderless everything, mm -hmm. so comfortable mm -hmm. in their space, gay, straight, not even a conversation, not even a thing for them. Thinking about back when I grew up where like, Everything that wasn't cool was gay. Yeah. Just fact. Like, if you were like wore necklaces, it was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Or you like cared about your outfit. You're fucking. You know what I mean? Right. It's changed so <coughs> much already that that's a beautiful scenario that mm -hmm. we're in right now. Mm -hmm. That that is not even looked in the same way. Mm -hmm. But I do think that there's 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 something about how we talk about certain things with with our younger generation. Of, Agreed. You know what I mean? And how we treat it. They're gonna but find how we them. talk to each other, period. Yeah, we talk to each other terrible. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so, so what's next? What's next for you on, on the next the next journeys in life? Like what what what's cooking? I'm getting involved now. I mean, you know, Evans getting involved. Um, we have great partners coming in. People who are getting behind uh, 
us and um, we just opened Hollywood Unlocked Studios where now people can come and create their own content. Um, I have a course coming out on how to build a successful blog and podcast. Very simple but very detailed mm. with all of the materials and all of the resources that I use to build my company. Because I built a $30 million company where it's valued now from Instagram. It's just an Instagram logged in, Hollywood Unlocked, how we go from there to verify, to building community, building audience, monetizing it, all the tentacles involved ownership and licensing, um, protecting your IP. So now just using my platform to just educate people and give them the tools. I'm not giving it away for free because I don't. Be I believe like if you really want to do it, invest in yourself. Absolutely. You know, I didn't get a handout, you not get one. But then also like, <laughs> I want to have a bigger imprint in, in the culture. I'll tell you something I haven't told nobody yet, but I just told, you know, I'm um, syndicated on iHeartRadio in 72 markets. We hold the number one spot on the weekend. We did it for two years. When I went into iHeart, I said, look, give me a show. Or Charlemagne put me with them. I said, okay, give me a show on the weekend. Never done radio, but I'm going to figure it out. I want to master this shit because Wendy Williams is the blueprint and she did radio and TV. I want to I wanna learn all aspects of the media business. And we launched in 52 markets. We're now in 72 markets. Hold the number one spot. Have held it and keep adding markets, but we don't keep adding money. Mm. So I said to iHeart the other day, I was in the jacuzzi at my house. Just woke up and was in the jacuzzi, and I just thought, like, I want more. And, and, and we're in the world of more. We're in the world of creating more. And the reason why niggas never progress is we're we too afraid to lose shit. Mm -hmm. mm. So I called the president of iHeart, and I said, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I, I love what you all have done for me. I can't, there's no room to grow here. I want to have a bigger voice. I don't want everybody to wait till the weekend to hear what I'm saying. I want them to log Absolutely. in every day. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have an everyday slot and an everyday check, it's time for me to check out. Mm. Most people would be so fearful of you losing it. You probably say that again because that's, that's beyond. But I said it and I felt fine. And I called the team. We went on our team meeting. And I said, hey, by the way, we're leaving iHeart. And everybody was like, for real? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not guess surprised what? at all. Guess what? That two years was an investment on a proof of concept. I built an audience. Mm -hmm. I showed that we can do it. Our numbers speak for Changed themselves. Changed everything. And now I can take that proof of concept and shop mm -hmm. it around for the highest bidder. Yeah. So I just feel like we have to stop being afraid of getting out of our comfort zone where we're not fed enough when the hunger is beyond what we're being fed and just go for the oh, full God. course. Like, I want it all, and I'm going to get it all. And they're going to doubt me along the way and tell me no, but guess what? I'm going to keep being right there in your face. And keep it being there, being there, being there. And it's gonna be so loud and disrespectful that when you come out your door, it's just gonna slap you in the face. How I, I respect the fuck out of it. I do too. You got to. There's too. no other choice other than being a hater. You know, I hit Charlemagne like, "Yo, bro, thanks for bringing me to iHeart, but I'm out." He was like, "Well, you built, you built your brand. You, know, you, you, know you built it. it. It's, like it's yeah. you. You get to make the decision." I said, "Yeah, yeah that's. Yeah, I do." Man, you got Chef J here. This evening we're gonna do something like a Caribbean type situation. Right here we have the oxtail soup, we have the rice and peas, and then here we have a little Chilean sea bass. And then we're also gonna pair it with a nice jerk broccolini.